Do you like dogs? So do I. Uh, this is a website that looks at dogs, looks at pictures of dogs and figures out what kind of dogs they are, uh, which is something I struggle with. I don't know. Let's see. What, what kind of dog is that? Anyone know? Uh, you have to say it in English, though. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's find out. Uh, let's see. This is a Scottish Terrier. That's what it is. Let's try, try another photo. And uh, let's tr this one right here. I have no idea what that is. Anyone know? It's a papillon. Um, doesn't that mean butterfly in French? I think it does. Uh, so this is, um, in fact, it, just so you know, it's not we're not cheating here. Uh, when you go here, you can actually search. Up here, I can search for pictures of dogs, like if I type in, I don't know, Lassie, uh, which was a famous American TV show many years ago, and about this dog right here. And there's pictures of Lassie. Let me see if I find a full a full body picture. Probably be easier. Uh, maybe not. I'll just grab one. Use that one. And it is a a collie. So Lassie was a collie. This is an example of machine learning. What machine learning does is it it, it takes a lot of data and uh, iteratively process that data, figure out how the properties of that data are related, how some of the properties are related to other properties of that data. It's a big field right now. If you're an expert in machine learning, uh, you can go to America and make lots and lots of money. People are crying out for di data scientists that are ec good at machine learning. If you're not a good at machine learning, there's good news is that other people are doing machine learning and they're exposing their results to you. And that's what's going on here. This this website, what-dog.net, is using a service called Microsoft Cognitive Services that I'm going to talk about today. It's a set of APIs that are just web service calls, and behind them is a lot of machine learning. And this is a big deal because to do machine learning, you really need a lot of data, a lot of compute power, and a lot of time. And uh, many of us have none of those things. So uh, we could take advantage of folks like Microsoft who are processing lots and lots of data. In this case, the data is in terms of pictures and looking at lots of pictures of collies so it knows what's the shape of a collie's head and nose and ears and so on. And it can recognize a collie and distinguish it from a sheepdog or a papillon or whatever. Um, that's the kind of uh, predictive analysis doing. Given a picture that it's never seen before, it can recognize patterns in that and tell you something about that picture. In this case, what kind of dog. Uh, here, here's another example, something built on top of cognitive services. This site is called how-old.net, and if I grab this picture right here, it'll it'll do two things. One, it'll identify the faces in the picture. In this case, there's two. We as human beings can see there's two faces in there, but that's a hard thing for a computer to do. Uh, and then also, it'll figure out some attributes about those faces. In this case, the age of each person. So it says each one of those people is 31 years old, and it can do it for uh, you know old people, young people, people of different uh, races and colors and uh, uh, expressions on their faces. Uh, my touch isn't working too well. Oh, uh, and I uh, let's see if I do this, I can I can grab a picture from my hard drive and I'll even figure that one out. Let me uh, find one here. Uh, let's see pictures, pictures. Down at the bottom, I've got a picture. I, was, I have a picture of me in here somewhere. Because who doesn't have a picture of me on their computer? There's one I, I was taken last year at this conference, and it was that's exactly how old I was last year. So I'm really I'm a little bit annoyed that this actually was accurate in this case, but that's the way it goes. Uh, it, there's even an option to get a human opinion here, so you know people can. I could, if it was wrong, I could maybe I should. I don't know. 27 years old. Come on. Uh, uh, the, so as people do use this more and more, it actually gets better because I'm feeding it more data. And so this is this is all just applications built on top of cognitive services. So I'm going to talk about cognitive services. Uh, I've got just a few slides. I'll show you the slides. The cognitive services. It used to be called Project Oxford. So I work for Microsoft, and Microsoft does a lot of things really well. And one thing, but one thing we do is we always have really nice names, cool names for our our products when they're in beta, and then they get released, and the, the names become really bland. So, but so now it's called cognitive. It's not, it was, it's not Project Oxford anymore. It's now my cognitive services. Which what was wrong with Project Oxford? And it it totally ruined this joke. Um, but I'm going to leave it in anyway. Oh, that's me. That's my uh, Twitter handle, my blog, my TV show. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is, it's, it's not an Oxford shirt, 
and it's not Oxford University. It isn't even my favorite punctuation mark, the Oxford comma. It is, of course, Project Oxford, now called uh, uh, Cognitive Services. I have no good jokes for that. And these are just pictures that I'm going to show you in a second. It's built on machine learning. It's grouped into three categories, vision, speech, and language. And we'll have different, it's about 20 APIs total that you can call that will return these. And I'll go into, I'll, sh I'll show you, I'll let you peek at all of them, and then I'll show you the details of a few of them. Uh, when we talk about the vision, there's um, the computer vision API, which will look at pictures and tell you what's in those photos and uh, do things like create thumbnails of photos, uh, tell you whether or not there's um, uh, any uh, like kind of adult content, maybe that you don't want people uploading their own photos. You want to test them, make sure it's, it's not something dirty they're picturing in there. Um, there's a face API, detect not only where the faces are, but where the landmarks in the faces are, where the eyes and the nose and the mouth is, uh, whether they have that face has a mustache or eyeglasses, how old that face is. There's uh, an emotion API. The emotion will look at a face and tell you, are they happy? Are they sad? Are they angry? Uh, and there's a video API, which will add some similar things with video. Upload a video, and it'll tell you, uh, you know, where are the faces in it? Are they happy? Um, uh, whether or not people are moving in the video, things like that, all kinds of stuff. Uh, the speech API essentially does text-to-speech and speech-to-text translations. Uh, there's language, it'll do spell checking. You can add, you can actually add to the language API <coughs> and put your own syntax in. Ooh, sorry. Um, and uh, so if you've got, you want to do some, some commands, add commands to your application, you can do so through this. Um, and there's, there's in the website, which I'll just sh I'll just run right to it. There's documentation there. There's a live demo. It's free. Oh, this is cool. It's free. <laughs> Get started for free. Uh, some of the some of these things are fully released. Some are in preview. Everything has a free service. And I see pictures pictures of slides. I'll I'll make these slides available. And uh, there's the links I just showed you. And this is a link here. Actually, but I'll, I'll jump to here right now really quickly because this is a blog post. Or not a blog post. I'm sorry. This is I've been writing about this a lot, and I've been um, uh, doing a lot of screencasts. So when you get back home and you say, "What was he talking about here?" Then you'll look. You'll be able to look at here. There's a bunch of screencasts that I've done on cognitive services. Here's a bunch of articles I wrote, and this is going to grow quite a bit. So my my blog is just my name, davidgr.com, and if you go to cognitiveservices.aspx, that's available. That's available right there as well. Um, apparently, the camera and the screen can't work simultaneously. Wait. Hey, what's going on? Um, I need some help. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right, that's the last of the slides. Uh, let's do some demos here. What I want to do is to go straight to Microsoft.com slash cognitive dash services. Right here. And on here, uh, if you go to uh, the APIs section, you see vision speech. They actually had a couple. These are just added in the last few weeks. Knowledge and search. There's searches, the Bing search. I guess I got up, up, up to my slides. So if you wanted to add search capabilities to your application, you could do so by calling a web service. And I don't know what knowledge is. That's brand new. Academic entity linking. Uh, that'll be your homework assignment is figure out what knowledge is because that just appeared recently. Uh, but there's the vision, speech, and languages. have been here for a few months. Um, and if I go into drill into vision, for example, there's computer vision. And I can look at this and I can see what the capabilities are um, to analyze an image. And this is the kind of images. Uh, that's, here's where the face is. Here's where the... Um, uh, the, the attributes about that, it's, he's a 28-year-old male, uh, is adult content. I think that's interesting because if you have a site where you're letting people add their own photographs, you, uh, you, you probably want to check to make sure that they're putting up dirty pictures up there. Uh, there's categories, there's tags that you can add to it, there's captions you can get from it. What else is there? It'll recognize celebrities. You know, is that a picture of uh, uh, Mihai Tataran, for example? You know, huge fan. And um, it'll, it'll detect that. It'll do optical character recognition. Uh, generating a thumbnail sounds like a simple thing, but if you have a, thumbnail, a picture and you want to shrink it down, it, sometimes your thumbnails aren't the same dimensions or not the same uh, ratio. So you may want to turn a square picture into a, uh, a rectangle or a, a landscape into a portrait, and you want to make sure whatever the important part of that picture remains in there. Uh, in fact, you can see these are little, little samples to show you how it works. So for example, if I took 
this picture right here, I mean, you, can, you can click on any one of these and it'll apply that thumbnail to it. But this picture right here I think is a significant one because the, what's the important part of this picture, of course, is the man standing on the mountaintop. And maybe the second most important is the sunset. Well, it was smart enough to figure that out. And every time it cropped, it always made sure that man was in the crop. So when I did this one right here, it didn't just take the center of it. It, it moved it off to the right a little bit because that was important. Uh, what else is in here? Here, pricing options. You'll see this a lot. There's always something free. And the free ones are restricted to so many thousand per month. It's quite a bit. If you're just learning it and playing around with it, 5,000 transactions a month is plenty. I, I actually do talks on this. And I built a couple of apps on top of it, and I, I have yet to run out. If you need to do more, if you want to build a business around this computer vision, then you can pay for it, and it's all deployed to Azure. It was $150, or I'm sorry, $1.50 per thousand transactions. So that's the cost that you would pay if you wanted to actually get something that was really scalable. So every one of these things has this, and I won't I won't drill down into all of them. But if I uh, go back to the, go to the face demo here, for example. Again, you've got uh, faces here. It'll detect. And th this is actually what comes back. Over here, you get JSON back. And JSON is just a standard format for delivering data. It's just text. It's really nice and terse, uh, so it's really small. It works well on the Internet. Um, and uh, this is, if you're going to, but the beauty of this is it's a REST API that's returning JSON, which means that you can call it not only from Microsoft technology, but you can call it from JavaScript. You can call it from uh, Java or your iPhone apps or anything that can send HTTP requests, which is just about any platform, any language, any operating system, any um, development environment. Uh, you can call these things, and you'll get this JSON back, back and you can just parse that JSON. Um, and so in this case, the face ID, you'll see you'll get a GUID, you'll get a rectangle. In fact, you'll get, you see this right here means it's an array, that little black square bracket. So this one happens to only have one face in it, but here's one with uh, multiple faces. You have two faces in here. And for each face, not only do you get the rectangle, identifying the, the width, height, left, and top, which identifies where that is, but also some landmarks. So where the left pupil is, where the right pupil, where the nose tip is. So you can do things to figure out, you know, maybe change that face and uh, give him uh, better looking eyes or I don't know. <laughs> uh, things like that. Do some analysis of that face. Where the outline of the mouth and the nose and the eyes and the eyebrows are. All that information about the face is available in here. There's some attributes. Is he smiling? Is, does he have facial hair? If so, what kind of facial hair? Mustache, beard, sideburns. Zero means no. Sometimes you'll, zero means no, one means yes, and sometimes you'll get values in between. So 0.7 means I'm pretty sure he has a mustache. You know, maybe it's one of those little tiny ones that you can't really tell or uh, it's in the shadow. Um, so you'll see that a lot, that, uh, especially when we get to the emotion, the emotion scores, you know. It'll look at a picture and it'll say, I'm 75% sure this person is angry. But, you know, maybe 15% he could just be sad. Uh, let's see, what else are we going to do here? So the, uh, uh, oh, you want to learn how to use it. Go down here to uh, the documentation. I'm sorry, developers. Uh, come on, scroll down here. Community NSD and resources. They've re there it is, documentation. The problem with the web is they keep changing the website here. So if I wanted to go out know how to use, actually how to use the, uh, uh, we'll stick with the Face API for right now. Um, in here, there's all kinds of documentation, how to get started. Uh, and there are SDKs. So there are libraries to get you started using it. If you want to use it in C Sharp, uh, I, like, I like using the libraries in C Sharp because they're strongly typed classes. So rather than having to send REST back and forth, I can wrap that up in a, <coughs> a, a static call from a library, and it'll return a face object. And that face object will have a face rectangle object in it, which will have a, a width property. And a, it'll have face attributes uh, object that'll have, uh, you know, the right pupil x dot x property. Strongly typed things that makes it a lot easier to code in things like Visual Studio. And if I'm not a .NET person, I want to code in Python or in uh, Java for Android. There are libraries for that as well. And you can see the documentation in here. But here in C Sharp, you can see this. And uh, I guess you have to click it really hard. Come on. Back in here, uh, API reference. So this this is the uh, data that's coming back from the REST interface right here, right here, right there, right there, right there, right there. Uh, and you can see um, the way the way this works is all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this URL right here, 
https colon whack whack api dot project oxford dot ai so they haven't changed the name of the the, the url it still uses the old name uh, slash face because this is the face api slash v 1.0 that's all there is right now slash detect hit that right now with a post request right here and um it'll return some json it, if you want to get mo more information, there are some optional arguments, query string arguments you add here. So return face ID would return a, the GUID of the face ID. I'm not sure how useful that is, but uh, if you wanted to see this along 20 character string representing that face, you can. Return face landmarks, that will tell you, if you, don't, if you specify nothing, it'll just tell you the rectangle, where the face is of every face in the picture. If you say return face landmarks, it'll also, for every face, it'll return the um, where the nose is, where the mouth is, where the eyes are. Uh, in fact, the outline and the pupil and things like that. If you say return face attributes, it'll return things like um, uh, whether they're smiling and whether they have facial hair and things like that. Uh, those are optional. Leave them off and they won't return those. And then in your header, you have to specify the content type. And the content type can either be, it's right down here, application slash JSON. In that case, you would send JSON looks like this that would specify the URL of an image out on the web somewhere. Or if you wanted to spend, send some binary data, if you want to actually have your users upload the picture from their hard drive, then you would set that content type to application slash octet dash stream. And instead of sending some, some JSON in the, in the body, you would send actual binary data. And then, that, and, that's, uh, and then this thing right here is required, the subscription key. The subscription key tells the services that this is your account. So it knows you get those 5,000 or 10,000. It depends for each service. Uh, it knows to decrement that. Okay, you've called it once. Now you have 4,999 until the end of the month. So, Or if, if you're over that, it knows how much to charge you. So you'll need that to identify who you are. So you want to keep that key safe. And I'll show you in a minute where that key is. But... And then you'll get a response back. You'll get, um, first of all, if it's 200, if you've worked with web service at all, you know 200 is good. That's the HTTP response. <coughs> and then the possible errors are down here, uh, way, way down here. If it's bad, anything starts with 400, that's bad. And it will give some information about why it's bad. Um, but if you get 200, hopefully you'll may all your responses be 200, then you'll get the JSON back. And here's what it looks like. And I showed you this already. There was an example that I wanted. It'll look kind of like this. So we actually test this in here with a real picture. Let's grab it. There's a little testing link. Open API testing console. They all have this. This is really nice. Face detect. And right here, here I can actually make a REST call. So I'll say return face ID, yes. Return face man, brand marks, I'll say yes for that as well. Return face attributes. Uh, here, actually here you want a list of the attributes to return. And I forgot what they are, so I'm gonna leave those blank. Um, you could add other parameters if you want to, but those are the ones that this will understand. And then uh, the content type, I'll say JSON, I'll point to a URL and my key. So I need to find my key. What I need to do is way at the top, under my account, uh, is, uh, th here's all the services that I've turned on. And uh, the face one is right here. And there's my key. I'm going to show you really fast here. Show, hide. I don't want you stealing my key and using up my 5,000. Uh, and uh, there, there's actually two keys. So if this one gets compromised, then I can regenerate it, which I'll probably do right after this is over because uh, it's being recorded. I don't want uh, you know to go out the internet like this. Um, and uh, but if this if this gets compromised, I can I can regenerate this one and immediately switch over to the alternate key. That's what that's this is for. Uh, so so this key right here, I'm going to use. So I got to grab that here. Control C. Oh, I, actually, I don't have to. I could just hit copy. Whoa, that's the magic of JavaScript. And just paste it into here, and uh, and that's it. And then oh, then I want. I'm sorry. In the body, I need to actually put a real picture URL right here. And uh, let's find a picture. I got to go online and just search for one. A picture of I don't know. We just oh, we mentioned Mihai before. So let's see if we can find a picture of Mihai Tataran. I hope I spelled his name right. And I want to our images. And oh, look, there he is right there. So right here, uh, let's let's do that right there. So here, and send it. And 
and what do they get back? So I got back, there's the URL. This was the request, so if you wanted to do this yourself in you know, raw tools, that's the post that was sent. You can see the headers in here, and there's the body of it. And I sent it, and the response that came back, 200, so it, it worked out really well. I got an array of faces. There should be only one face in that array, and here's the face rectangle, and it'll find that. Um, and there's the coordinates of where the pupils are, the eyes are, and all that stuff. All that just came back to me. So I could do that in a tool like Fiddler, or uh, uh, there's a lot of online browsers, tool, or I could write some, some code to make an AJAX call for, for that. Uh, that's the raw way of using it. They all work this way. All these, like, a uh, couple of dozen APIs, they all work in a really similar way. They're just REST web service calls. Any, any questions so far? All right. Let me give you a couple of examples here of applications that I've done. So we'll start with the face. Let's see. Here's the face right here. So this one is, uh, what do I do? I need to do node for this one. Let me, let me launch a HTTP dash server. Oh, no, I want to go, I'm sorry, I want to go CD backslash here. Not there. Control C, Control V, there we go. Enter. And then HTTP dash server. And that put it up at uh, 8080, so let me see if that's going to work here. Local host. 8080, and no, I don't want to do that. What did I do wrong? I need HTTP local host 8080. Let's try that. Here we go. So this is a, a picture right here, and as soon as I pasted in this picture, it, it brought back a bunch of JSON and identified. I just echoed out where the, the top left with here, where the pupils are, the X and Y coordinates here, where the mouth and coordinates are. And then I, I wrote some JavaScript just to put a little yellow box around that. And this works for any face at all here. So if I, I don't know if I still have Mihai's face in here. I do not. Let's see what's, uh, if I paste in this one here, then I can write a little application that figures out, that takes that data that came back, outlines his face, and I, all I do is just put labels on top of it. So you can do this thing. And where, if I look at the code, it's all just in JavaScript in this case. So the JavaScript is right there. Uh, and it's right. Here's the web service URL that I'm going to call, api.projectoxford.ai slash face. And I happen to have an, an output div. I'm using jQuery here to grab it. And then here's, in jQuery, you could just use this dollar sign dot Ajax to send a post request. To this URL, I'm going to pass in the subscription key. In the headers, I'm going to pass in the subscription key and the fact that it's application slash JSON and the fact that it's uh, the data. Here's the body of it. It'll be URL colon that picture of Mihai right here. And when it's done, this is done asynchronously, so when it, with the callback, we'll run this code right here. It'll make sure that there's at least one face in here. And I just coded it just to look at the first face. And that's what I'm just doing. I'm just parsing through that face. I'm finding that very first face, and I'm getting the face rectangle, and it's width, height, left, and top. And then I draw a little rectangle around that. And then I put a little label next to where the pupils, left, and mouth are. So this is all just um, uh, jQuery code just to take that data that came back. So the call to Project Oxford is very, very simple, or to uh, Cognitive Services, very simple. It's just this right here. And then what you do with that, it can be as complicated as you want. And that's what all this code is, is just doing that. And by the way, I should point out, this code is all available on my GitHub page, which I've linked to right here. So if you go to my GitHub page, then you'll find uh, Cognitive Services demos. And all the demos I'm going to show you today, you can go and play with those afterwards. Another good reason for me to re regenerate my key. All right. Uh, that's Face API. Let's do another one here. I've got... Uh, uh, analyze images demo. Let's uh, let's do it with emotions. So now emotions is similar to the face API, um, but with emotions we're going to uh, not only detect the faces, but we're also going to figure out whether or not they are happy or sad. And the way that works is um, I'll send it a picture. It'll return with an array of faces, and each face will have an, uh, something called scores. And within each score, there'll be a property for happiness, for anger, for surprise. There's like eight different possible emotions, and each emotion will have a score from 0 to 1. The closer to 1, the more likely it is 
that picture is uh, uh, is expressing that emotion. That face is expressing that emotion. So this one happens to be a Windows application, and I'll show it to you first before I run the code. And so this one here, here's the URL of a face. You see this angry girl right here. And if I click on Get Emotions, then you can see that uh, I, what I did is I here's the results. Uh, these are the scores. There are eight different scores. Anger is 0.93. All the rest of them are very, very low. So it's clear that anger is the highest score. And then I just grabbed whatever the highest one is and wrote it right here. 93% angry. Um, and then I had a, a, another one here because the playoffs are going on. This is Sad LeBron. I don't know if you know Sad LeBron in Europe, but uh, he's um, he's sad. Sad LeBron is sad. Uh, this is it can do a groups of people. Here's a picture with a bunch of people. Some of them are right over here. This person's hidden, uh, but it still will detect the same thing right here. Uh, but if you do this, you'll see a, an array coming back, and I, every face will have different scores. It happens they're all happy in this picture here, but some of them are 99.99% happiness, and some are only 94.78% happiness. Those might be the, the ones that were the, not as big a smile, or maybe it just has a there somebody else in front of their face blocking, partially blocking the smile. And then you could do, in this case, so I better clear that. This is uh, different emotions. Yeah, uh, Three faces and... Uh, Neutral happiness and sadness for those three phases. This one is actually using a library. So rather than actually making the rest call myself, what I'm doing is I'm uh, there's my combo box, and I'm I grab the emotion API key. So every the that's a different key than the face API. Every every service has its own key. And then what I do is this emotion service client right here. So I create I I create this emotion service client. That's just a .NET class that uh, is referenced by this library. In the constructor, I pass in the API key. And this object then has a method called recognize async. And I'll pass in the URL of an image, which I just get from that drop-down list. And that, under the hood, what's going to happen is that's going to make that REST call for me. And rather than and it'll, the REST call return JSON, but this library is smart enough to take that JSON and transform it into a an array of strongly typed objects. So this emotion object right here is as a face rectangle and has scores. And if I look at scores, then each score is let me. Oh, sorry, right here. F12 uh, has an anger, contempt, disgust, fear, etc. All those things right here. So now I can work with strongly typed objects and say, all right, so let's iterate through all the emotion results and then grab the scores and the scores.anger. It's it's all, I'll show you right here, dot, scores.anger. So it's, it's all strongly typed, which is really, really nice. And I can, and then I just wrote code. The rest of it is just me writing code to figure out what's the highest one and display it on the screen. This is, again, it's, it's absurdly simple, simply to just say, to make the call. It's these two lines right here. So the library makes it even simpler. You have a question right here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you'll notice here that it returns an array of emotions right here. And it, it turns out this, uh, the face I looked at only had one picture. Oh, actually, that didn't. Some did have an array of them. So the one with the all smiling people had like eight faces in it, and so that array contained eight faces. The GPS coordinates are not available part of this, and that makes sense because the question was, are the GPS coordinates part of the, the service? But the service is all the calculations are being done somewhere else in Azure. Uh, we don't know where that server is. <laughs> So, but it would be if you're writing a Windows application or a phone application, you add that yourself. That's part of the capabilities of both Windows and phone and, and Android and iPhone, whatever you happen to be building. So you certainly could combine that with GPS. Oh, you mean the GPS of where the photo was taken? I don't think that's part of it. No. Um, there, there may be other ways to get that though. If you grab a GPS, not every not every picture has that. GPS isn't part of a, it's just metadata in the picture that people may or may not choose to add to it. And you might be able to get that through some if you could just download the picture and analyze the metadata. There are APIs for doing that. 
But now you're, now you're counting on the person that created the picture adding that metadata. All right, uh, let me move on here. We're, we don't have a whole lot of time, and I've got a lot of stuff to show you. So uh, I want to go to the, the emotions demo. Um, uh, oh, here's an interesting thing. So you, did you notice a flaw in one of these things? I was, I'll, I'll kill this right here. I don't need to run node anymore. But in um, the face demo, where is it? It's the face demo. The flaw in here. And the flaw is that I have uh, my API key. Where's my key? Uh, here, I'm calling get key right here, like I'm trying to uh, uh, hide it, but actually just another script file, just a JS file. The key is in the client side JavaScript. That's not very secure. Somebody could look view source and see that. So generally what I'll do is, um, in what, is I'll wrap this call to cognitive services in another server side call. So I'll create, what I've done here is I've created a web API just a web service of my own, and all it is is a pass through, and um, it can in here I have the key. So if I look at uh, uh, my controllers, controllers, I have the face controls. So this is doing face, and here when I do a a post, get face data, I'll pass in an image URL. Then I actually, here's where I get my subscription key. Now it's stored in a web config on the server. I can lock that down, I can make it secure, and um, and then I call the post right here. And in this case, I, I could have used the .NET library, but I wanted to be, you know, I want to be a man and, and use raw HTTP. And so that's what I did here. I just constructed a raw HTTP request like this. And, uh, and then I'm making the call from the server out to cognitive services. No, this is a, a, just a simple password. And the only reason I'm doing it is I just don't want to expose this key on the client side. And then in my client side right here, now I'm going to call this, this face controller. So in web API, the, the URL is API slash face. That's the controller minus the word controller. And that's what I'm doing somewhere in here is right there. I'm going to post to my web service URL, which in this case, instead of being cognitive services, it's going to be API slash face. And I've, I've locked it down. It's all the same site, so I don't have any cross-domain scripting um, problems there. Uh, I've locked that down. Pass in the URL. There's my uh, content type I'm going to get back. And then when it comes back, I just have code to analyze it. Let me just run it here. And then there's this face here, kind of the same thing. And you could type any face you want. But it comes back with exactly the same type of data. It's just wrapped around and showing more of a best practice. All right, let me see. Another demo here. Face. Uh, oh, let's try the speech to text. This is kind of cool. I haven't, I've been, uh, I haven't tried this on this network yet. I always have trouble in this network. Speech to text is kind of interesting because what happens is that it calls uh, a web service every time it detects a new word. So if there's a short pause, it's, it says, oh, that must be a new word, and an event fires, and then I, write, I, can, I can call the web service. Uh, and then if there's a longer pause, it says, oh, it must be done, and it'll, uh, it'll get the entire, it'll, it'll finish off the web service call. So let me show you that here. Um, got too much open ass. Uh, in here, here's my code right there. And what happens is I've got on here, I've got a, ah, a button on here where I say start recording. And uh, you click it and it just disables it. Uh, and it turn, changes the color so you know it's recording. And, uh, and then what happens is I'll, I'll wire up some events. So where am I here? Converts text to speech right here. So I'll wire up some events right here. And it'll say that partial response receive handler. This 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 event right here says every time a word is detected, it'll go out and call the web service. But what it calls it, it, it doesn't just send that word, it sends every word so far. And so what should happen is that sometimes it'll 
it'll detect a word, it'll make a guess about the word, but as it gets further along the sentence, it'll realize, oh, that word that I thought of, word number three, really doesn't make sense, and it, you may actually see it changing. And then when it's done, it detects that uh, the whole response been received, that's when there's a longer pause, <clears throat> then it will, um, uh, <clears throat> all I'm doing is just enabling the button again and saying done. So in here, let's see, uh, run down to that code. Uh, nope, not wrong one. Uh, this code right here. There's the there's the event handler, and right here. So here I'm just calling that web service dispatcher dot invoke to call it asynchronously. So let me let me run this thing and do some text to speech. Better clear my throat first and stand up. <coughs> uh, whose woods are these? I think I know. His house is in the village, though. Let me try it again. It's uh, probably a slow network is causing that. The walrus and the carpenter were walking close at hand. Mm. That's not doing a good job. My, my guess is that the slow network here is slowing it down. So who's ever, who's ever upgrading to Windows 10 right now? Would you just pause that a second? So anyway, stop downloading so much stuff. That's better. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's better. Uh, it, when it's faster, what's kind of neat is that you'll see it changing the the words earlier on. Uh, and I've got this actually hard coded to English. I don't really know if it'll. Uh, there there is a language in here that I could set. I hadn't really thought about this, but this is a. Uh, let's see if I can find where. Uh, I'm probably not even setting here. Yeah, language en dash us. I'm gonna I want to try this. What's the, does anybody know what the key is for Romanian? What would I put a type in for this? R-O dash R-O? Uh, let me see. So R-O like that? All right, I'm going to try it. And somebody, I don't really speak Romanian, so somebody tell me what I should say. What's it's the sentence? Like six words. Tell me. No? What is, say it. Say it in Romania. Mm, somebody come up here and say it. Here. Here we go. Noroc. <laughs> That's all I know. I, I, this is new. I've never tried this before. Wait, is it ready? This just, uh, you don't actually speak it. That's just so they can hear you. But here we go. Good. Start so, recording. Avem un voluntar. Să mai încerc o dată. Ah, am fost pe Ok. Avem un voluntar? No? Uh, well, it was worth a try. Sorry. All right, we're going free form here. All right, so anyway, that's, uh, let me slow that down here. Uh, I've got another demo here. I don't know, two minutes left. All right, so, oh, here's the thumbnail. I'll show you the thumbnail here. This is... Uh, what I've done here, actually last year, I, w I came to this conference last year and immediately afterward I went to a different conference in Stockholm and I took a picture in Stockholm, which is, uh, I wanted to turn into a thumbnail. So uh, this is a nice simple one. Come on, bring the code up. Uh, where's the picture? Here it is. So in here, let's see, I'll just grab it was this picture right here, and I just wanted, it's a square picture, but I wanted to turn it into a rectangular thumbnail, and so that's all this thing is doing. It's going to, uh, uh, grab my subscription key, uh, it, this is a, another library here that's, uh, that'll wrap the rest call. So I create this vision service client, um, and the vision service client has a method called get thumbnail async. I'll pass in the URL of the original picture, a width and a height, it'll be 100 by 100. Uh, it'll be smart cropping is true, meaning it's going to figure out where the subject of it is. And uh, I don't like what I should do 100 by 200, make it rectangular. That's probably better. Um, but it'll make it smaller. <clears throat> and then um, I'll get the results here. And all I'm doing, there's nothing special about this. When I'm done, these two lines just display the original and display the thumbnail. So that's it should just show those next to each other.
Uh, this is a nice tool if you, again, if you want to allow people to upload their own photographs, then you can, um, uh, and, and you, the, you don't really know what size photo they're going to upload, but you want to display it on a page with all thumbnails, then this is a nice way to do that. So here it displayed the original photo, and then over here it displayed the thumbnail, and it kept the, this, this buoy and this building really are the important parts of that picture. So it was smart enough to do that. All right. Uh, let's see. That's a simple one. That's done. All right. And I know. Let's see. I have another demo here. Face API. I did that one. Uh, emotions. Motion. Analyze image. I can't remember what this one does. Um, oh, I remember what this does. Okay. This actually does analyze the image itself. So this is kind of nice because it'll tell you what the picture is. And I think this is what's going on with the what dash dog. Um, is it's it's figuring out what's going what is actually in the picture. So if I call if I call a um, if, uh, this this particular web service and I pass in an image, it will return uh, a caption for that image and a bunch of keywords for that image and then some some properties of it. And once again, I'm going to use a, li a .NET library for this. Give it a second. View full screen. And this library <coughs> is uh, right here. It's called the Vision Service Client. I'll pass in the subscription key right there. Um, and, uh, and then I have to add, like one of the parameters I'm going to add is this features, visual features list. These are all the things I can do. I want to know whether, whether or not is it adult content. So does it potentially, you know, something kind of racy. Um, a, do I want to return categories? This is the data I want to get back from the web service. So I'm telling it ahead of time. Do I want a description? I can tell it the color of the image. Can I get a list of faces? What kind of image is it? Is it a JPEG or a PNG? And then some keyword tags. Now the fewer, I, I'm returning pretty much everything here. If you wanted to go faster, um, then you wouldn't, you just return the stuff that you want. But for demonstration purposes, I'll, I'll, I'll do everything. And uh, and then I'll just call analyze image async. I'll pass in the URL of the image and that list of features that I want to return. And then it'll come back with this analysis results. And then I'm just going to look through that analysis results. Again, it's a, this strongly typed image that has, or a strongly typed object that has, you know, whether it's adult or the list of categories and so on. And I just want to iterate through that and display it on the screen. In fact, there's a adult.racy score. And what I did is I said, if the racy score is greater than 0.3, then I've got like a shocking image that I'll show you that says, oh my gosh, it's shocking. Uh, it's not, it's only like 0.31. I don't have, I don't, <laughs> there's nothing really racy in here. Um, but If I call this, I've got just a couple of sample images in this. Uh, this so here is, here's a picture right here of a cat with a uh, bird on his head, yeah, because that's what the internet was created for. And I'll call that, did I click it? There it is, a, a white cat looking at a bird. That's the caption. That's not bad. And all these tags. So you can just automatically tag that picture and figure out what it is. Um, this is a picture of... Uh, uh, there's an eagle flying over a mountain. Let's see what got. Analyze it. It is a a bird is flying in the air, and then all these pictures here, and then I have this picture right here. Uh, this is my slightly racy picture. Yes, and I click analyze image, and not only will it give a caption and a bunch of tags, but it returns more than 0.31 racy. So Macaulay is shocked by uh, that picture. Yeah, that's a, that's as racy as this session gets here. All right, so let me see. Stop that. Stop that. All right, we've got about 15 minutes left. Good. I'm going to show you two more things. Um, one is I just want to point out that if you're um, uh, this list right here uh, of these are just the ones that I've activated. Actually, more services than that. If you go under APIs, then you can activate more of them. So, for example, if I wanted to use the, uh, I don't know, this academic, I don't think I've activated that one, then I say get started for free, and now it's activated. Now I'll have an API key. Uh, if it's already activated, it'll just take me there. But I can come down here and find that uh, academic. 
it's now in this list right here. And it tells me I get 10,000 transactions per month. You can see this This one I get 1,000 transactions per month. This one I get 10,000 transactions. It, it changes all the time. And if I used like, uh, and this will even over here, it'll show me the quota. I mean, how many I have left. So where's the, the face I did call a few times. If I click on show quota, it should tell me um, when, when my month is up and how many calls I have left. So what did I call the face API three or four times just in the last half hour? Uh, but I'm, I'm sure I'm not close to 30,000 unless somebody out there has stolen my key already and been inside of a tight loop. Uh, well, apparently it's got to do a lot of math just to do that. All right. Well, anyway, trust me, it does that, so, but <laughs> they'll show me that. Um, and then I wanted to show you something else on this site, which is under applications. You can see other applications that other people have built on top of this. Which isn't happening. Applications, it's still thinking. Hmm. Uh-oh. There we go. And then you can, in fact, you can submit your app here. Um, but on here, there's there's applications that are built on top of, let's make it a little smaller here, uh, Celebs Like Me, Face Hero. These are kind of fun to look at and give, give you some ideas about what you want to do uh, with this stuff. Um, and, uh, and so I built one. It's not in here yet, but I'm going to show you the one that I built. Uh, the code for it, it's called Emotions in Motion. And I'm using three different services in here. Um, I'm using the face API to determine where the faces are and where the eyes and the nose and the mouth are. I'm using the emotion API to figure out where, uh, what, what emotions the, the, are displayed in those faces. And then I'm using, I use the thumbnail API to generate some thumbnails, which later on I, I took out of here. Don't do it live. I just did it. Just cached it and stored the thumbnails. Um, so in here, seeing similar code to this here, I'm using these very much face control. I've got a web API that's doing all the work in here. So get face data. So if you post to this, uh, this, this API slash face, then it'll get the face data. It'll grab, uh, this web service URL and oh, I'm not using the dot net. I'm not using actually raw HTTP and posting to the face API, just sending some JSON to a, to a URL, whatever URL is passed in here, and that's going to return a set of uh, information about the face, like the rectangle of the face and where the eyes and the nose and the mouth are, things like that, convert it into JSON and send it back down to the client. Similarly, I have an emotion controller, so if you post to API slash emotion, then you'll, it'll do this, and it's just a different URL projectoxford.ai slash emotion slash v1 slash recognize and you'll you'll pass in an image URL and it just passes it to the cognitive services PI with the description key in the header. So it's just a wrapper to protect my subscription key. Um, and then it'll get back this list of emotions and it'll return it to the client. And then in my JavaScript, my client right here. And down at the bottom I have oh I have a link to um, the script file right here. It's just calling those web APIs. So get face info, there it is. It's going to call API slash face, and there it is. And then when it's done getting the face, it'll call the emotions uh, somewhere in here, image URL. But show image, emotions, uh, there it is right here. It's going to get the emotion right here. So just making a call both to the face and to the emotion and getting that. So what I've done, and then what I did, this is, this, this is the silly part, is I, um, I allow you to manipulate those emotions. So it'll detect it as happy, and you say, I don't like happy people. I'm going to make him sad. I'm going to make him angry. And that's what I did here. So let me run it and show you how that works. And, oh, what's, what's the build error? Maybe I, JSON cover does not exist. Uh... Hello, control dot. 
Uh, generate property. Oh, I should have a reference to the Newton Soft JSON library. Uh, all right. Well, I'm not sure why my local ones are, but I've deployed. Luckily, I've deployed this to Azure. So I'll just I'll show you the one that's online here. It's called. Uh, in fact, you can play this at home. Um, it is called Emotions. You have to spell it right. Emotions in Motion. Azure Websites. Net. <coughs> You can see some thumbnails up here that I created in advance. And it'll load a default picture here, right there. There's a picture of me from a few years ago. And it says, and it loaded, and it says right here, original emotion, happiness. Uh, but I don't want to be happy. I'm going to change it to anger. And so when I click on that, I, I then detect where are the eyes and where is the mouth. And then I, on top of that, I put angry eyes and an angry mouth. Uh, or disgusted eyes and a disgusted mouth. And that's the whole point. This is pretty much the coolest app ever written in the history of apps. And then I thought uh, you can type in a URL, but that's really hard to do. So I just uh, did this, these little thumbnails up here uh, to change that and uh, let you pick one of those. There's this angry David, uh, but no, let's make him disgusted David and so on. So you can play with this all you want. Um, you have, you have 30,000 per month the calls to each of those services, so eventually it may run out. And, um, but that's, uh, that's kind of a cool idea. Uh, okay, about 10 minutes left. I'm going to show you a couple of things that uh, other things you can do here. And this is also on GitHub. You can look at the source code in here and I encourage you to, to do that. Uh, there's an SDK. So there's other. The, there's all the images or all the demos that I just showed you. But there's other demos available as well. Go over back to here to the Microsoft.com/slash/cognitive/services, and under developers, hello, hmm. under developers resources, resources. It's not even showing that. Let me, uh, APIs. How about if I do Control F5? Mm. I want to show you the SDK. There is a really nice SDK with sample code in it. And it's a great way to learn this stuff. There we go, resources. SDKs right here. I open it up in a new tab. And here it is. It's another GitHub repository. And on here, uh, you can just grab that and... Um, the easiest of life. If you're not going to be contributing, this is open source. Microsoft is very uh, committed to open source. So if you wanted to actually contribute to this, you could. But if all you want to do is just play around with it, then you can uh, you can just download a zip file right there. And I did that. And I'll show you a couple of the things in here. The zip file, I did it a few weeks ago, so it may actually be even newer now. But if I go to, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, there's the one from a few weeks ago. And you can go in here and actually look at some of these. So the video ones are kind of interesting. If I grab uh, this right here, here's a WPF application. Um, where's the solution? Did I miss it? Sample WPF. Uh, see, there it is right there. If I open this up, then it'll do things like, um, it, it'll create a, a what they call a thumbnail of a video. So if you want to upload a 60-minute video and turn it into a two-minute highlight, it'll do that. I can't do that demo now because it takes a really long time to process that, um, but it'll do that. It can analyze the faces in the demo. It can tell you whether or not there is uh, any movement in a video. So maybe a security camera. Maybe you want to analyze it later, not watch the whole thing. But just no, just focus on a door, go to bed, and come back, and in the morning just have it tell you, did anything move near that door? Nobody should have come to this room. Or, or you know, or what time did my daughter get home last night? That's, that's the app that I want to write. Um, I don't even have a daughter, but that's the first thing that popped into my head. <laughs> uh, and um, oh, so and this is one I, I use. This is, this takes about two minutes to to run, so I'm going to get it started here. Uh, even though it's a really short video, video takes a lot longer to process. I don't think the I, the network in here is a little bit slow, but I don't think that should be a problem. And I hope I haven't changed my key since then. Let me see. Let's try video stabilization. Uh, I better double check my key actually now that I think about it. If I'm in here, my account, my account, come on. Um, make sure I have the right key uh, for video, uh, which is here, and copy that and then paste it. Uh, oh, I can't paste it anymore, can I? Oh, yeah, right here. Here, there. 
looks like it didn't change. So, okay. And video stabilization, I'll load the video. And I have a picture, this picture right here, um, I should show it to you actually before I, uh, the one I took, I took in uh, Michigan, where I'm from, in the United States, in the middle of winter. This is a museum in East Lansing, Michigan. And I was, take, I was taking this picture as I was walking through the wind and snow, and then I actually sped it up a little bit. And you can see that it's, it's you know, bumpy. Uh, and this is a video stabilization API. So if I grab this and I add it, it should, should be able to call this web service and it'll return a video with the shakiness taken out of it. And the way this thing works is rather than having, a, you know, most asynchronous calls, what you would do, oh, heck, uh, exception occurred. Let's see if it's something obvious. View detail. An error occurred. Uh, the remote name could not be API. To pro that's not true, unless I, I totally lost my internet connection. Um, I'll just try it one more time. This, yeah. Uh, video stabilization. I'll try it one more time. If it doesn't work, then I'll just chalk it up to bad internet. Oh, it isn't. I, I don't know. The subscription key is right, and it said that the it couldn't find that. URL. I guess it's possible that the URL changed in the last two weeks, but that, that seems odd. The name could be api.projectoxford.ai. Um, so maybe they actually changed the endpoint, um, which I will check real quick. But um, uh, if I do that, then what I, I could resolve this by, this isn't my code, this is just the SDK, the sample code. If I downloaded the latest sample code, then it would have the correct API in there. Um, and let me just look really quickly to see for the video API is, um, where's the endpoint? Oh, it'd be in our documentation, so which is developers, documentation, here, and for video, which is uh, control F video, Bing, not that one, video API, then API reference. If they change the URL, they probably would have changed some of the arguments as well. So I, uh, API reference, try that again. Oh, it's in this other tab, that's why. Over here, and that, that looks fine. Uh, request track face, but that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing stabilization. Huh. The uh, face detection and track, that's not what I want. Where's the stabilization? Oh, this one right here. And down here and stabilize. So there's what it's going to call right here. But maybe something changed. I, uh, I don't know. That uh, uh, demo failed. Whatever. <laughs> um, I've got about uh, three minutes left. I Are there questions? Yes, right here. Uh, so behind the question was, behind the scenes, are they using Azure Machine Learning? And all I can tell you is they are definitely using machine learning, and uh, they're being hosted on Azure. I don't know when they first created these if they used like ML Studio and some of the tools in machine learning. Um, they certainly started it, started um, working on this cognitive services before the ML Studio stuff was released to the public. So they were probably working with the machine learning team, but which tools they used under the hood, I don't know. Uh, so the beauty of the, if you, the question was about Azure Machine Learning, and Azure has a lot of tools to make machine learning a lot easier for you, so you can get started more quickly, which is, which is great for us. But the beauty of this is you don't really have to know anything about machine learning. You can take the advantage of the machine learning that other folks have done, which is really nice. Question in the back? Can it be trained to recognize other one? I think, I haven't looked at this yet, but I think that's what's going on in some of these newer services down here. So if I go down to uh, these things right here under academic and knowledge exploration, I think that's what's going on in those. And I haven't really dug into those yet. So if, you, if you're really interested in that, come and see me afterwards and we'll, we'll explore it together because I'm really curious about that as well. All right, I've got, yes sir, one more. 